All right. Anthony, are you surprised at the score? No, not at all. I'm the one who said I wanted Buffalo, and so did you. <laughs> I didn't think it would be this <laughs> low scoring, but Frank Reich, uh, he's come in, he's looked very composed. I think a question I have, uh, normally backup quarterback, he kind of moses on around training room, has a relaxed week, goes in, doesn't expect to play. How is it different when you're a backup quarterback and you know you're the man? Well, I think initially you know you got to go in there and perform on Sunday, and it's not a fact saying that am I going to go in there, if someone's going to get hurt, or something's going to happen, or they got to throw me and we're behind. So your attitude's got to be like, hey, I'm a starter. I got to go in there and perform the best I can. Um, this is my team now. It's my time to take over the reins and uh, lead them to a victory. So you just kind of your attitude has to change a bit just to be more aggressive, I would say. I'm sure the team's attitude towards you improves as well when they know they've got to well, rely on you. I like to think so. <laughs> you were particularly impressed with the touchdown pass by Reich, weren't you? That's right. He, uh, he made a nice read on it. Uh, the outside man was coming in, James Lofton, and it was a slant pattern. And he found the hole right between the defender and the back of the end zone, which is important to sit a receiver down. If you watch here, Reich's sitting there looking. He's patting a few times to wait for him to get open. He fires it right in the back of the end zone. And the defender just underplayed it, and it was a great catch by Lofton. Does that, does that do a lot for his confidence? I think if you can take your team down in the initial half and, and put the team in a position with their head and get them 7 nothing like they are right now, definitely feels that he's taking command. He hasn't played in a year, and it really feels good out there to get that first initial touchdown. All right. Well, we're going for a commercial to see how he does in the second half. Join us in a couple of minutes. Welcome back, everybody. So the halftime score of our game, 7 to nothing, the Bills. Now let's go to Gary, who has the other early halftime scores. Well, the other big game in the AFC that's important today is the one in Cincinnati, where the Bengals are taking on the Oilers. A chilly day in Cincinnati, and Teddy Garcia, the Oilers kicker, modelling a nice line in Christmas stockings and putting the Oilers up in the second quarter after a scoreless first. Then Warren Moon went to work, his 33rd touchdown pass of the season. This one to Hayward Jeffries, who not only gets the touchdown, he gets penalised five yards on the kickoff for his celebrations. The Bengals with Boomer Hurt decided to keep it on the ground. Good idea, James Brooks, 44 yards on this run, finally gets knocked out of bounds just before he can get into the end zone. But that set up Icky Woods, bulldozing over from two yards and he did his celebrations on the sidelines where you can't get penalised. Celebrated a bit too soon, though, because they missed the extra point. Then Brooks again with his longest run of the season, 56 yards, and the touchdown. The official wisely getting out of the way, and it's tied at 13 all there. Both teams need a win. The Bengals to stay alive, and the Oilers to keep pace with Pittsburgh, who are at Cleveland today, and you know what that means. This Bubby Brister touchdown pass to Chris Colloway is one of three in the first quarter alone. Two more in the second, and the halftime score is 35 0. The festive season seems to be open season on quarterbacks. Troy Aikman joined the list of casualties today, hit by the Eagles Clyde Simmons, and leaving the game in Philadelphia with a dislocated shoulder. Bad news for Dallas's playoffs hopes. Crucial game for them, and they came up against the league's strangest offense. The quarterback, who's going for 1,000 yards rushing, and the running back, who has four passes for four completions and four touchdowns this season. Keith Byers to Calvin Williams there, and the Eagles lead it 10-3 at half time. If Dallas news, it's good news for Tampa Bay. They need help from the Cowboys and the Saints to make the playoffs. They started well against Chicago today. This Vinny Testaverde pass to Mike Carrier. The Bears without Neil Anderson, so Brad must have carried more of the load. Seem to have got in for the touchdown here. It was ruled down at the one. That let Mike Tomzak in for the sneak. Then he hit Wendell Davis on a 23-yard pass and the Bears lead it 14-7 at half-time. Rams and the Falcons, two teams playing just for pride, and the Falcons trying to break a losing streak that stands at seven, winning it 20-10 at the moment. Finally, news of yet another injured quarterback, the Patriots' Tommy Hodson limping out of the Jets game. New England 21-7 down at half-time. They lose their last two. They tie the NFL record for 14 consecutive losses. Well, the quarterbacks are dropping like flies. I was up in Philadelphia a couple of weeks ago, and Keith Byers now four passes, four touchdowns, and he's not doing the running Randallers. That's a great team up there, isn't it? I'll tell you one thing. His quarterback rating has got to be up around 250%, which is pretty good. I'll take that any day. And another quarterback goes down, Aikman. How much does that hurt the Cowboys, who won and 
15 last year, if they get to the playoffs, which is a chance of them doing it, be the first team ever to have won one game the year before and make the playoffs, does this really hurt their playoffs hopes? I think it does. I think Babe Laufenberg's the backup. He's a journeyman. That's really about it. They had Steve Walsh who could have come in, but I think that's going to be uh, pretty detrimental to their team. All right, back to our game. 7 nothing. the Bills. What have both teams got to do to win this? Well, I think Dan Marino needs to get back into the game. I think he needs to throw more to Clayton. He needs to open up some big plays. And they had one in the first half, and that was it. You're not going to beat Buffalo with just one big play. And I think uh, Buffalo has turned around ball control. When Reich has a guy open, he's going to hit it. That's the kind of quarterback he is. And I think it's going to be an explosive second half for one team. <laughs> You're still sticking with the Bills. <laughs> That's right. uh, Miami's defense hasn't looked as it looked early in the year, has it? Why is that, do you think? I think as the year progresses, a lot of teams will pick up on schemes. We do it a lot at the Green Bay Packers where we'll look at their, their techniques and how they break down their fronts, and you start exploiting them. And that's what I think the teams have done. Um, a defensive coordinator needs to adjust that, so uh, that won't happen again. But I think right now teams are adapting and doing a pretty good job with it. All right, well, let's see how they adapt to that defense in the second half. We're going back to Ridge Stadium. The Buffalo Bills are kicking off with the foot of Scott Norwood. Here's the kickoff by Scott Norwood. And it's Musk, recovered by Buffalo. Mark Logan had difficulty with it, and the Bills able to cover. You know, I told you at the beginning about a turnover in a ball game, and this is crucial. The Buffalo Bills get the ball. That's what they do at the turnover now. But you have got to come up on the ball. Logan, that time, got to get a handle on the ball. You can't make a critical error like this right at the beginning of the half or any other time in a ball game. The Bills believe they still say they have the ball. We have a signal from the officials saying that they have the ball. The Dolphins don't believe it. Official indication that the Bills have recovered, and it was Dwight Green, five-year man out of Oklahoma, a native of Miami, born and raised in Miami, who was able to cover up after this muff. All right, actually, Bailey, Carl Bailey is the first guy that gets the ball, but they say the ball comes out, and Drain ends up with the ball. How he gets it, <laughs> amazing to be seen. All right, first down at the Miami 32 as we open up in the third quarter. Here's Thomas. He was able to break a couple of tackles along the way. Run out by Odom. Now, the first seven times that Thurman Thomas carried the ball, he went to his left. Now they're coming back to the right. Here's the blocking. McKellar is there. Ballard is there. Missed tackle was there, and we saw that in the Washington game an awful lot with the Miami Dolphins' missed tackles. He picked up eight, second down and two at the 24. DB is flanked to the left. Here's Thomas. And not able to pick up the first down. Stopped by the nose tackle, Sean Lee. Lee emerging as the starting uh, nose tackle in his third year out of North Alabama. There he is, number 98, acquired from Atlanta just before the start of the season. Apparently they spotted it for a first down. He was pushed back the other way. So Thomas did pick it up. It is a first down at the 22. And the Bills, I think, might start that hurry up again because they've got three wide receivers in the ball game, along with the tight end McKellar and the one running back, Thurman Thomas. Lofton is to the left. Here's Thomas. Thomas getting inside the 20 yard line again Cliff Odom on the stop Cliff Odom the Dolphins second leading tackler who has played very well has had his name called on a number of occasions today 91 yards 18 carries for Thurman Thomas second down and seven two minutes gone by in the third Thomas to surge for the marker. Offerdahl 
with the tackle on Thomas. The thing that's it's, it's not surprising is take a look at the Buffalo Bills. This is all one-on-one -on -one blocking. They're blocking to the inside. This, this time they're going down to the side of John Davis and Howard Ballard, number 65 and 75, along with Ken Hall. But these plays are being run between the tackle and the guard. It's a third and one, and Jamie Mueller has come on along with Don Smith. Bills packed in tight. And it's a first down for Smith. J.B. Brown making the stop. Don Smith, a very valuable player for the Bills, an unsung hero in his fourth year out of Mississippi State. All right, here's the line blocking again. They would look at Ken Hall is right there. He just destroys Sean Lee, who is a nose tackle, and he stays in there. They block out on the linebacker, and here's Ken. You can see Ken Hall on 98, Sean Lee. Once that happens, the hole opens up, and it's a first down. First down of the 11, right for the end zone. Reed! Touchdown! This pass right on target. Now there's a flag in the end zone. Demonstration number 83 after the touchdown, the five yard penalty on the kickoff. On sportsmanlike conduct after the touchdown. Okay, so, but it is a touchdown. Okay. Brown is out there covering along with Jarvis Williams, number 26. And look where this ball is thrown right into the hands of Andre Reed. No chance for anyone else to get the ball. That is a perfect pass by Frank Wright. Andre Reed with a second catch of the day. Leads the AFC with 69 receptions. His eighth touchdown of the season. And Norwood puts it through. Andre Reed, though, had been very quiet in recent years against the Miami Dolphins. He's put up six on the board. So Buffalo increased their lead to 14. We rejoin the game at the top of Miami's next drive. They're in great field position after an excellent kickoff return by Mark Logan. First out of 35. Off the screen, Sammy Smith. Reaches to the 31. Ray Bentley tripped him up. It'll be a second down and five. They mark it at the 30-yard line. Harry Galbraith is... Uh... Wants to get in a fight with Cornelius Bennett, I think, and Shane Conlon, which is not smart. I mean, if you're going to pick on somebody, take the little guy. Number 31, take me as the defensive back. There you go. We've been talking to him. They're upset, excited. Now Duper flank to the left. Second down and five. Here's Duper coming across. Or the Clayton coming across. Complete intended for Clayton. Bentley broke it up. Bentley and Tally combining on the coverage. Well, Marino just has to unload the ball because Bruce Smith comes inside now on Sims. He comes all the way down the line and watch it. And as soon as Marino sees him, he knows he's got to get rid of the ball right now. Clayton had no chance of catching it. Marino sacked one time today, although the Bills come in with the feeling we just have to bother Marino. We're not looking to pile up the statistics. That's what Marv Levy was talking about last night. Don't worry about those sack stats. Just want to be around them constantly. Third down, five. And it is caught for the touchdown by Mark Duper. He beat the corner, James Williams. A 30-yard touchdown pass play. Duper with the bubble and able to hang on. Well, you know, you're, you're looking at third down situation. Here's Williams on Duper. Now, watch what happens. Williams slips, I think, or steps on Duper right here. He slips to go down. The ball is hit up in the air. Duper staying with the ball gets a touchdown. But, you know, how many times have you seen Marino do stuff like this? You know, the Bills go down, they score, it take him uh, almost a half to score a touchdown. Marino does it in one series of down, bang, just like that in a, in a, in a matter of about, uh, about two and a half minutes, touchdown. Mark Duper with his fifth touchdown of the season. That's a low total for Mark. It's been a bounce-back season for Duper. And here's Stoyanovich. 
10.44 remaining in the third quarter here in Buffalo. It's the Bills with a 14-7 lead on the Dolphins. So the Dolphins pull to within seven. Then on the Bills' next drive, Norwood kicked this 21-yarder. So the Bills lead 17-7. Join us after this break for the fourth quarter. For the city of Buffalo, this is the biggest sports event since the American Football League Championships of 1964 and 1966. 64, Buffalo beat San Diego to win the AFL title. 66, the Bills lost to Kansas City. And then Kansas City went on to play in the first, first ever Super Bowl. Herman Thomas on the outside on, on first down as we get underway in the fourth quarter. New Green made the stop. Let's take a look back at the scoring in the second quarter. It was right to Lofton on a seven-yard touchdown pass, 7-0. Buffalo. And then in the third quarter, look at the move by Andre Reed. And he's able to make the reception, a five-yard uh, uh, pass play. Here's Thurman Thomas. Thomas looking for the uh, first down in the third quarter. Later on in the quarter, Duper uh, in that battle and able to hold on on the bobble to cut it to 14-7. And Scott Norwood connected from 21 yards away for the 17-7 score. So the Buffalo Bills pick up the first down from the 18-yard line. Home deep back is Thomas. Once again, the Dolphins are having their difficulty making tackles. We saw it uh, for a while in the third quarter, and we saw it uh, several weeks ago against the uh, Washington Redskins. And you look at the possession time again, as many times as we talked about this, is what you do with, with the possession time. The Bills obviously scored 10 points, and the Dolphins in that 2-23 scored 7. 141 yards, 29 carries for Thomas. Second down and five. Thomas again. Broke a tackle for the touchdown. First half, the one thing about Thurman Thomas is that you know his legs never stop. He just keeps moving, he bounces off of people, he can he can run just as well left or right as he can straight ahead. Wright puts it down for Norwood. The Buffalo Bills with a 24-7 lead on the Miami Dolphins with two minutes gone by in the fourth. Both teams punted on their next possessions. We pick it up on Miami's next drive. They're deep in their own territory. There's 3.32 left in the game. And Jensen, on the completion out of the 19, is stopped by Tally. And Kelly has been working the uh, sideline uh, pretty aggressively. You know, we, we talked to Jim, I talked to him yesterday in the hallway, and I said, Jimmy, you're going to be sending the signals in to Frank Gregg. He said, I'll leave that up to Gail Gilbert. I'm, I'll be too nervous. Second down and three. And the Dolphins have the first down. Again, Jensen on the reception. Stopped by Tally. So the Buffalo Bills on their way to clinching the division championship. That'll be three in a row for the Bills. Home field advantage, which is of prime importance. It is deflected. <laughs> Nearly picked off. Cornelius Bennett had a shot that was intended for Mark Clayton. Just see what he did after he, he almost had the ball. He jumped up. I mean, this could hurt. Number 97, Cornelius Bennett. 
Biscuit, watch it. No, what? He, he gets hit in the head, but he jumps up and falls on the ground. I thought it was kind of a Pele move <laughs> myself. It really was. It was beautiful. All right. Bernays tips the ball. And then he just jumps up in the air. Second and ten from the 26. On a 21-yard hookup stop by Clifford Hicks. A Buffalo win clinches the division. Home field advantage throughout the playoffs. So the Bills on their way to receiving a first-round bye in the expanded uh, playoff setup. Penalty marker is down. The diving catch made by Pruitt. It is ruled incomplete. He scooped it up. But let's see what the uh, what the call is. We got offside against the Bills again. A look at what the Bills are about to accomplish. They come off the solid victory over the Giants last week for the Bills, one of the most inspired games of the season, losing Jim Kelly in the process. But the feeling is that Kelly will be out about three to four weeks. He'll practice in three weeks, play in four, and then he'd be back for the Bills' first playoff game, which would be the divisional playoff. And that's talking to the Buffalo Bills, the coaching staff, and everybody involved, that that's the most important part with Kelly right now is, is the fact that that he can get back for the playoffs, but that week off, that's why they needed to win a division here. Penalty marker down again on that first and five. All right, here's Red Cashin. Lined up in a neutral zone again. The Buffalo Bills offside again. Two in a row gives him a first down. Miami. So it is a first down at the 42. Here's Ray Bentley. Now you can see that uh, Alice Cooper look. <laughs> and Marino almost intercepted by Leonard Smith. Pass intended for Jim Jensen. Andre Reed, who caught a touchdown earlier. This pass looked like it was intended for Leonard Smith. I mean, he's going down. Clayton is running downfield also, but watch when Marino throws the ball. Right into the hands of Leonard Smith, and he drops it. Scared him. <laughs> Leonard Smith in his eighth year out of McNeese State, one of the uh, harder hitters, took a shot at himself. Yeah, well, he hadn't had a chance to hit anybody. Did he? 21 for 37, 250 yards. The Dolphins have not gotten it done. He's been sacked three times, intercepted once. No sideline. Mark Duper. But uh, he caught it out of bounds. It'll be a third down play coming up. It's a third down and 10. just shovels it. He was in trouble. He avoided the sack. Pass was thrown in the area of Jim Jensen. Bernays Bennett was all over him, and, he, and, and it's, that was a legal pass. Minute 53 to go in this fourth quarter. Capacity crowd of 80,290. And I would venture to say that just about everyone has stayed. They want to celebrate when the final gun sounds and the Buffalo Bills officially win their third straight AFC East title. <laughs> look, when you even look at the exits, I mean, they're, they're standing in, in the hallways in the exits. These people have not left. And you, you think they're not going to party here? Bills continue their undefeated play at home. They will make it eight out of eight. The AFC's only undefeated home club. And Marino throws on fourth down and almost picked off. Again intended for Pruitt, John Hagee. Had a shot at it. Thanks to our spotters, Michael Gluck, Steve Solomon, 
Penalty marker is down. And we appreciate the uh, stat work of Gary Haller and Larry Pollock. Our producer, Glenn Adamo. Director, John McDonough. Well, today's Ronald McDonald Children's Charities Player of the Game is Buffalo quarterback Frank Reich. McDonald's and NBC will donate $5,000 on behalf of all the players selected in today's games to Ronald McDonald Children's Charities to help give kids a better tomorrow. Reich, 15 for 21, 235 yards, two touchdowns as he stepped in for the injured Jim Kelly in glorious fashion. Herman Thomas also a huge day, 154 yards on the ground. Jensen on the completion, stopped by Darrell Talley. Well, the executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill, the coordinating producer of NBC's football, John Ferrances. Today's game has been produced by Glenn Adamo. And there you see another hookup through it. On the reception, John McDonough, our director, associate director Doug Graver, production associate Jenny Huber, technical manager Art Parker, production managers Ralph McFarland, Tim DeKime, and technical director Jimmy Johnson. Thanks to uh, all those folks and a cast of thousands. As we wish you a happy holiday from Western New York, from Rich Stadium in Buffalo. Time running down. A minute eight left in this fourth quarter. Well, Red Cash is saying Miami took out, took a second time out. It should read a minute 13. They will put five seconds back onto the clock. And the reason if you were crawled with everything that was going on, there was on fourth down, an incompleted pass. The Buffalo Bills were offside. Gave the Miami Dolphins another chance on fourth down. They completed it for first down to Jensen. And they're now, they now have the ball just inside the 11 yard line but the score is 24 to 7. You do a great job with names. You know that? Sure. I should read that. That's terrific. Thanks so much Paul. Hey. Unaccustomed as I am to your compliments. I know you know there's so many few things I usually compliment you on and that's yes. one of the great things that you do. And they have readjusted the clock a minute and 13 remaining. And Marino changing the play at the line. And goes incomplete, intended for Clayton, covered by Hicks. Next week, the Dolphins will close at home against Indianapolis. They won at Indianapolis back in week seven by the score of 27-7. And next Sunday in the final game of the regular season for Buffalo, they will conclude against the Redskins at RFK in Washington and then uh, get the bye in the first round of the playoffs and prepare for the divisional playoff meeting. Next Saturday, good one, Kansas City Chiefs. And the Chicago Bears will be there, yes. Test. Soldier Field in Chicago. Weather will not be a factor there either. Yeah. And that'll start at 12, 12 noon Eastern time. Bob Costas hosting NFL Live. Arena throwing, touchdown! It is Mark Clayton on the reception. So Mark Clayton making his return today in a big way. That's his third touchdown of the season. And Marino is running out to the outside. Everybody's kind of relaxed, and here's Clayton. He bobbles the ball, but then makes the catch, gets, gets down in bounds in the end zone. That's touchdown. There's still a minute to go in this ball game. One of the most exciting plays in football, as far as I'm concerned, is the onside kick, and that we're going to see in just a few moments. And for Clayton, seven receptions, 89 yards. And here's Pete Stoyanovich with one minute remaining in this fourth quarter. The Buffalo Bills now leading the Miami Dolphins by the score of 24-14. Well, Miami attempted an onside kick but failed miserably. So the Bills came out victorious 24 to 14. They win the division and have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Miami are now in a fight with the Raiders to see who plays at home in the first round. Anthony, 
That's a big win for the Bills. Are they capable of putting some pride back in the AFC? I think they are. They got, uh, like I said, a tremendous defense with Bruce Smith. Uh, Frank Wright came in today and did a terrific job for him. So they're not just one deep at quarterback. So they know they can win with him. But I have to admit that I am partial to the NFC, so I don't think they're going to do too well against the... You say that Wright came in, did the job, and they've got two great quarterbacks. Do you think it's more that Buffalo have got a scheme that isn't, but you know, like Cunningham with Philadelphia, he really is pretty much their offense in many ways, whereas it seems like Buffalo, they can give it to anyone. You know, anyone could step in there. I mean, you have to have some skill. Right. I mean, uh, you could go in there. Too, <laughs> even I up. could, huh? <laughs> Even you could. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's true. I think that you look at Philadelphia, Cunningham is their offense, and that's it. You go to McMahon, and it's a complete, completely different show. Uh, Frank Wright and Jim Kelly, they play in a system that is interchangeable with quarterbacks because, first of all, Reich's been around long enough that he understands the system and he knows it makes it work, and he's watched one of the best. So I, I think you've got to give him a lot of credit and give their offensive coordinator a lot of credit. All right. So a big win for the Bills. Now let's go to Gary and see how all the other games that kicked off early went. Well, the news from the AFC Central is that the Bengals are still alive in the playoff hunt. They ran away with it in the second half against Houston. Four second half touchdowns, including two passes from Boomer Esiason to Eric Cattis, and they win it 40-20. No more second half scoring at Pittsburgh. That means the Steelers are in sole possession of the lead in the AFC Central, with Houston and Cincinnati tied at 8-7. and seven. Dallas couldn't come back against Philadelphia at the Vet. That's a blow to Dallas's playoff hopes, and it puts the Eagles in position to claim home field advantage in the wild card game, 17-3 to Philadelphia. The Buccaneers are out of the playoffs, finally and definitely. Tampa Bay Buccaneers 14, Chicago Bears 27. The Falcons, though, finally have their fourth win of the season. Rams 13, Falcons 20. Patriots can't get their second, though. They go down 7-42, the Jets winning big at home and those are the results all right thanks gary so big win for the atlanta falcons it has absolutely no meaning whatsoever but it did better than the green bay packers wait a now, sec wait. <laughs> i want to start a rebuttal here <laughs> now let's take a look at the picture and see what's been happening the afc and the playoff picture now uh looking a little different it is it's shaping up uh, considerably you look at buffalo and pittsburgh and the raiders uh like we talked about uh the raiders in miami uh, it's going to come down to next week. If they both win, then uh, the Raiders have it because they head-to-head, -head, the Raiders won that. Uh, then the rest of the picture, Cincinnati's back in it. Houston sl slid a little bit. And Indianapolis is coming in. Now the uh, NFC, well, the picture looks like the same for uh, San Francisco. But Philadelphia, 9-6, and six, Washington, 9-6. and six. It's a big game for Washington next week uh, because they like to play uh, Philadelphia at home. Dallas now slips, and that last playoff uh, spot is still wide open. All right, well, I've got two Cinderella teams, Philadelphia, NFC, Kansas City, AFC. What are your two Cinderella teams? I cannot picks? believe you said that because I was going to say Philadelphia, too. And uh, just because I played them and they're a tremendous team, but if they lose Cunningham, it's over. And I would say uh, the AFC, I like the Raiders because I like the bomb. All right, well, thanks very all much right. for joining me. Thanks, Mitch. And that wraps things up for today, except to remind you that all of today's results will be found on the Channel 4 update line, and that phone number is 0898 442 444. Calls are charged at 44 pence per minute standard rate or 33 pence per minute off-peak, so mind when you call. Alternatively, turn to page 470 of Fortel. Red 42 is back at 5.30pm on Friday, or you can catch the repeat at 12.30 Saturday lunchtime. Next Sunday, we come to you at the slightly later time of 8.30 p.m. with highlights of the final week of the regular season. We'll also bring you a chance to win a trip for two to Super Bowl 25. So don't miss us at 8.30 next Sunday. Until then, from Gary, Anthony, myself, and everyone else involved in the production of this program, have a safe and very Merry Christmas. Good night.
Well, that's nice. If you're keen on American football, there are two Channel 4 books available. The American Football Annual for 1990-91, which costs £11.95, and a guide to American football at £3.95. And you can get